Welcome to Selenium Conference today. I have Boni Garcia with me for this wonderful session. A Swiss Army knife for Selenium web driver. Boni, without any delay, stage is yours. Thanks a lot for the introduction. Um, thanks everybody for joining me. Um, this is going to be a talk about a tool of the web of the Selenium web driver ecosystem, which is called Web Driver Manager. Maybe you have heard about uh, this tool. Otherwise, I'm happy to, to explain it. I think, uh, well, we can wait for a minute until everyone is joining, but I'm going to, to introduce the talk. As you, as you may know, the driver manager is, is, a, is a tool, it's a Java tool, which helps to, to manage the drivers required with selected driver. But as, as of uh, version five, it's, it's more because of that, the, the title, the driver manager now, it's a helper library which provides different features for Selenium. So as I, as I said, Selenium uh, Web Driver Manager Server is a tool which allows automated driver management and other features. And well, it's an open source project. You can, it's in GitHub, the dog is in here, okay. And I want to explain uh, first why I created this tool. I want to explain why motivation to create a tool like Web Driver Manager. So of course, this tool uh, starts in the context of Selenium, okay? As you may know, uh, Selenium, sorry, I'm going to change this. Yeah. Uh, with, uh, Selenium started in 2004 with, when Jason Jaggins and Paul Hammond created what we call today Selenium 1. It was a JavaScript library called Selenium Core and the remote control uh, client server project. It was a very popular uh, project because, well, it provides browser automation. And in parallel, in 2007, Simon Stewart created the driver, which is a different project at the beginning, okay? Was for the same uh, feature, let's say it's for browser automation, but with a different, different approach. So they decided not to compete, but to merge these tools in what we call today Selenium Web Driver or Selenium 2 at that time. They merged these two projects in, in a single one. And well, it's a game changer in the automation, in the test automation space for browsers. Okay. So my history start at that time in 2007. I started my PhD focus on test automation and, 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 and software quality. And I was a user of Selenium remote control at that time. So during my PhD, I use Selenium remote control for assessing a web application, okay, as part of my PhD dissertation. Of course, Selenium continued evolving. Uh, we, ha we have to wait until 2015 for Selenium 3. And by my side, and in 2013, I joined another university as a, as a postdoc researcher, and I started to use Selenium web driver for assessing, in this, in this, in this case, WebRTC application, which is a real-time uh, communication application. In 2004, it was an important year for me because I had my first contract as a professor at, at a private university then. And for this history, it's important that I gave a course about web programming. So in the second semester of the course, I was designing the content of that course about web programming. And I felt Selenium not something that was mine somehow because I had experience with Selenium uh, remote control. I was a user at the time of Selenium web driver. So I wanted to teach Selenium to my students, okay? But when you uh, want to start with Selenium web driver, the first thing you need to do is to download a driver and get available for your script. And that's something that for me was inconvenient, okay? I wanted my student to focus in the test and not in the setup because I was very, well, I was afraid that uh, student get lots in this uh, setup process. So for that, for my students, I decided to create the first version of Web Driver Manager. Okay, that's my motivation. I wanted to, to create a tool that make that process automatically for them. Okay, that was my first in, in, intention. Make them, my students at that time easier when onboarding to Selenium Web Driver. So well, the course was, was okay. The student did that part. No problem at all. And well, it was an open source project. It was public, so I started to use it. I started to use Web Driver Manager in my projects. And also very important for this story, 
I did something interesting, I think, which is answered a couple of questions in a Stack Overflow about this project, Weather Manager. I recommend people to, to use this because there was there was questions about web driver, uh, about uh, driver management for Selenium. So I recommend to use a uh, web driver manager and something happened that people start using it. Okay. So I keep maintaining the project because I felt that was useful for some people. And I'm, I invest my time in maintaining this project. And well, the project starts evolving version two, version three, and version four during the next years was focused on driver management, okay? This cron driver thing, the Tigeco driver binaries was uh, managed by with, with driver manager. During those, this each year, I continue working at the university. In 2017, I wrote a book about JUnit 5, which I talked later about a different project I created. I was, I switched my, my university as a professor, first at Rejon Carlos University in Spain, and then um, at Carlos III University of Madrid, which is my, my current position. So Selenium continue evolving uh, with the, the standard recommendation of the web driver protocol. Also the byte die recently, like the first draft. And we reached another important milestone in this story last year, okay? In 2021, last year, um, well, as you might know, the Selenium project was creating Selenium 4. Okay? I was particularly interested in this version because I was writing a book for O'Reilly, a book about Selenium 4 in Java. And for that, I create a new uh, major version of WebDriver Manager, which is WebDriver Manager 5, which was no longer about um, automatic driver management, but also I provide different features and I'm going to explain today. So that's the story of virtual manager. By the way, this year I had the great pleasure to join uh, SOSLA as a staff software engineer in the open source uh, program office. And I have started to contribute actively in the Selenium project. So it's, this is going to be great for me and I hope for the Selenium project uh, because we are going to do great things together, I hope. So regarding web driver manager, well, as I said, the original motivation was to uh, implement the automated driver management. As you may know, when using Selenium web driver, the test using Selenium web driver API does not communicate directly with the browser, but with an intermediate piece called driver. Okay, driver, for example, for Chrome, we need Chrome driver. It's a binary file which translates the web driver commands, which is a protocol, okay, standard protocol in here, to something that the browser understands, a native communication between the browser. Okay? So this driver, it's a requirement to implement as an anyway web driver script. Okay. So I call this process um, driver management to the process of resolving a, a given driver for a given browser, okay? So if I want to control Chrome with Selenium with driver, I need Chrome driver. And this process I call driver management because it has different steps, okay? First, you need to download the driver. Imagine you are in a Linux machine, so you need Chrome driver for Linux for your architecture, okay? and you need to go to the repository and download the specific version you need, okay? Because uh, it, in a given Chrome driver version, only it's valid for a range of Chrome browsers, okay? So you need to select the, 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 the proper version of Chrome driver and download to your, to your machine. And once you have downloaded this Chrome driver, you need to set up, okay? You need to make something with, with it. This setup uh, in Java, it's something like this, okay? You need to export a given property with the path of the driver, okay? And you need to include this in your test. The other option is to put your Chrome driver, in this case, in your path in the environment variable, okay? That's something, in my opinion, inconvenient because if you 
to this this property you are going to link your the test to your machine okay you are using a path in your machine your test is not uh, cannot be running in, in, in any other machine and that's very inconvenient okay but even worse in my opinion because well you can live with this because it just works to your to your path in your machine even in your continuous integration server and so on as i said even worse is the maintenance okay the third the third step in this process is the maintenance okay because well in the long run the driver is going to be incompatible with your browser and that happens a lot imagine in this case that you have chrome 98 so at the moment you download chrome driver 98 dot whatever this this chrome driver which is the, the driver you required for, for, for controlling Chrome. But um, browsers, modern browsers like Chrome are evergreen. Uh, we call this evergreen as, as the feature because they automatically and silently upgrade to the next stable version. You don't notice, but your browser is constantly upgrading itself. But that happened also for Firefox and, and, and Edge. So in this example, Chrome 99 is still compatible with Chrome Driver 98. So your tests continue working. But at some point, and this example is when Chrome reached 100, version 100, Chrome 100 is no longer compatible with Chrome Driver 98. And your test is going to fail with this message. This version of Chrome Driver only supports Chrome version, in this case, N is 98. So your test that originally it was working is going to fail if you manage your driver manually, okay? And that's something very inconvenient. So in my opinion, the solution for this problem is to make this process automatically. And that's what uh, Weather Manager does. By the way, this chart, it's a proof I found that, uh, well, this is a real problem. I mean, I this chart, uh, it's, uh, well, the Google Trends about this sentence, this version of Chrome driver only supports Chrome version, okay, in Google. This is this line, okay, this blue line. And in the other X, we find the versions of Chrome, the major version of Chrome. And you can find something interesting, in my opinion, is that for some given version of Chrome, for example, this one, there is a peak of this search in Google, which means that people search a lot at that time, because this is sign. At that time, there is a peak of this search because I suppose that, well, tests fail because of this and people search on Google a solution for that, okay? Because they resolve manually the, the Chrome driver and eventually the test fail, okay? Happens here, happens here, also here. Well, there are like peaks, there are like Chrome version that, that make, uh, well, the Selenium to be failed. And as I said, this, the solution for this is to use a, a, a tool like WebDriver Manager, which make this process in runtime, okay? Well, WebDriver Manager, basically you need to include the dependency in your project, typically using maybe not graded, okay? And that's it, you have a simple API composed by, sorry, this from driver, Firefox driver, X driver are static methods, that resolves uh, the drivers for different browsers, Chrome, Edge, um, Opera, Chromium, Explorer, and so on. With the setup method, okay, this automatic, this driver management, it's automatic for you. So this is the skeleton for the test I proposed in the documentation of WebDriver Manager, okay? This is a JUnit 5 test, which in the, in the before all, before all the tests, you incorporate this line, okay, the call to web driver manager to set up your driver. This happens each time you run the test. So web driver manager, uh, it's going to, to match the, the, um, the, the um, driver version with the browser version each time. And your test is going to, to be properly executed every time, okay. If you use SMG, more or less the same, changing the annotation, but well, this is a skeleton I proposed to create um, and then you went to write test. Of course, you need to focus on here in your test logic. You need to open a URL and so on and so forth. So, in between the development on 
of wet weather management I created a different project that I'm going to mention quickly. It's Selenium Jupiter. When I created this, this book in, in 2017, um, it's about, about game five. So I realized that the, the Jupiter model, which is the J Unified programming model, it's very convenient for Selenium Web Driver if you are able to implement the driver management in an automated fashion. So as you can see here, a test, a Selenium Web Driver test using Selenium Jupiter reduce the boiler plate because only you need to, um, as a test parameter, select the type of your wet driver object, Chrome driver in this case, and that's it. Internally, Selenium Jupyter uh, um, invokes wet driver manager to uh, resolve the driver, instantiates the Chrome driver, and after the test, it is disposed the, uh, the driver object. Okay? So if you are a JUnit type user, maybe you are interested in, in taking a look to this project, which is basically a wrapper of WebDriver Manager. But focusing again on WebDriver Manager, as I said, it was first released in 2015. The first version was, well, was like a weekend project. In fact, I, I, I created the first version in a weekend. The logic bar was very straightforward. The most difficult part for me was, um, well, uploading the, the, the artifact to Maven Central because basically that was configuration, but the logic was very simple. Okay, I, I, I did it in a, in a couple of days. And basically uh, and, and that version, that the original version, basically check the latest version in the driver repository online, for example, like from driver repository. Uh, I the um, manager calculates that version, has a, a cache, if not, it's in the cache, I download the driver and I export the driver path to uh, as a Java property. Okay. That's it. And that original uh, algorithm works nicely. But as I said, I continue maintaining the, the project and I realized that the, this, this algorithm, which I call now a resolution algorithm, it's not that simple as that because this latest version, check driver latest version, it's not always true. I mean, uh, the latest version is not always the proper version for your browser. Okay? Mostly happens, but not always it's the latest version. So the resolution algorithm has been evolved quite a lot in, during this year, okay? In here you can see, well, like um, the complete resolution algorithm. I am not going to explain the detail. You have a paper if you want, and I can show you the details in the, well, you can check the documentation too. But now uh, the, the algorithm is much richer, okay? I have, well, I, I know what driver has, two knowledge databases, commands database to check the browser version and a version database to match the browser with the driver version, okay? So somehow it's smart to uh, detect your browser and to detect the um, driver proper for your browser, okay? Also, it has a cache uh, mechanism rich because it has a TTL. TTL is time to leave. So whatever you get in, the, in your cache is not fresh forever, okay? This is inspiring DNS. It has a time to leave. The TTL means time to leave. So uh, it's fresh, it's considered fresh, these assets in the cache during some time, okay? Not, not always. So I can, I think that whether a manager this feature is quite uh, stable today. It's, it's solid, it's, people use it and, and it works very nicely. But uh, yeah, to conclude this, uh, well, not only the setup, the setup method is provided for this feature, it has a, a rich API for configuring a lot of things, okay? For the browser version, for uh, forcing an architecture, okay? Okay, in proxy, Many, many different features. I recommend you to take a look to the, to the documentation because there are a lot of um, well, um, APA methods to configure with driver manager. And also very important, in my opinion, for testing, it can be configurable from the outside, okay? Not only from Java, but also with Java properties, okay? Like this, if you, for example, want to configure something when you run with Maven or Raider, and also for environment variables, if you don't have access to, to these properties, if you only can change environment variables, you are, are able to do that also for whatever now. So, well, this is all about 
automated web driver manager, which is web driver manager one to four, okay? And today I want to explain the evolution, okay? Why web driver manager five, it's, well, a step forward and the, that this feature, okay? I created web driver manager five um, a year ago. In fact, I, I haven't vacation during that year, during July, I was mostly coding with Web Manager 5 because as I said, I was working this book and I wanted to explain this new feature to the book. And yes, uh, well, it was released in, in August. So it would be great if you could speak louder. Okay, I want to try. Maybe it's a problem of my, my speakers. Have anyone has problem hearing me? Yes, Bonnie, able to hear you. But it will be great if it is a little louder. That is okay. what it's mentioned. Yeah. I'm going to try to, 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 to speak louder. Um, before continuing, I'm going to share a link with you. Let me copy this link. This link, it's a survey I am doing because, well, I, ask, I work as, as a professor and still I am as a researcher. And I'm really inter interested in, in, well, in understanding Selenium. So that is a survey I'm doing with another professor uh, about the challenge of Selenium with driver, okay? So if you have some time to, to, to fill that, that survey, it would be great. And well, as a, as a gratitude for that, uh, I'm going to, to give three uh, free eBooks uh, to the participants. I will make a raffle. Randomly, I select some three participants and uh, or really send you uh, um, three um, um, free copies of my book. So, well, that's something that I want to share here. It's the, the first time I, I'm, I'm starting this survey, and so it would be great if you can, you can contribute to that. So, regarding the talk, Webdomain Manager 5 provides different features, okay? Uh, so I'm going to explain these features with code, okay? which is, I think it's funnier that only speaking. So let me show you these examples in Eclipse, okay? This is Eclipse, and you can see here, this is a test. By the way, all the tests I'm going to, 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 to show here if are in the documentation, okay? Here in the doc, this is a menu, you cannot. Yeah, in here, you have a lot of examples, and all the examples I'm using, it's in the doc, and that example that's in the repo, okay? This is in the web driver manager repo. You clone, you have the code. So how is it that this example, it's about uh, finding the browser. Okay. Web Driver Manager 5 provides this method, get browser path, to get to find the browser if it's done or not in the in your in your computer. So I am now in Windows. If I run this test, I'm going to use like this. This test is going to be a skip, okay? Because I am using this optional path in an assumption, chain, okay? This is a set J. I am looking for the browser path. If not is uh, present, the test is going to be a skip, not fail, okay? Because otherwise, if I am not running this, this is not a Mac machine and it's going to fail because Safari is not present in my machine. So this is the first feature. The ability to find if a browser is installed or not in your computer. Next, the builder. Okay, the builder, it's like a syntactic sugar that, well, not only the setup method, directly you create the method with this, uh, the web driver object with, with this. As you can see, the, well, the test, it's reduced a bit because you only need to specify create method directly from this static uh, method. That's it, you can directly create a test, in this case, using Chrome Driver. You can change to another browser simply by changing the manager, the, the static method you use. Okay. That's a method with five methods. Okay, that's only a syntactic sugar, okay? It reduce the boilerplate of the test. But in my opinion, this create method, it's important because it opened the gates to the next relevant feature, which is browser in Docker, which is maybe my favorite feature of web driver manager five. Let me show you this, this example. Okay. This method, this um, test, use this method, browser in Docker. Okay. 
So I am going to use a Chrome driver, which is no longer uh, local. It's a browser in a Docker container. Of course, the requirement to, do, to, to, to run this test is to have Docker installed in a computer. This is a window machine, but even though I have Docker also. So if I run this test, okay, now it's done. Internally, with the manager is going to connect to Docker Hub and pull the latest version of Chrome, in this case, Chrome 103, and use that container to support the test, okay? I didn't see anything because everything happens in the Docker container, but the test is green because I have this, and it's quite uh, fast because I already pulled this, this version, okay? So basically, I only had to change this to use a local browser or a browser in Docker, okay? This is a local, and with that, it's the same test, but using Docker. Okay. And again, whether I want to connect at that time to get the latest version of, of, of Chrome in Docker. So you are sure that you are going to use always the, the, same, the latest version. You can change to another Docker in browser, simply changing the method that whether I want to use. Here, I'm, I'm pulling this. And this version has changed. Well, okay, no problem. I'm going to, to go to the next to the next slide because this is going to pull the um, the Firefox driver for me. So this uh, this feature is interesting in my opinion because it's not only about having the the, bro the browser in Docker but also different features. For example, well, if you want to debug your browser, okay, you can you can access to the desktop using BNC. BNC. Why do we use the create method? Okay, because you need the the, the the instance. Okay, in here you say that you are going to use Firefox in Docker, and then you create to get the instance. Okay, the web driver instance is required to get the the browser. Okay, this this basically it's the model of the browser in your Java code. Okay. So the next feature, it's about, well, debugging using BNC. Let me show you this another test. This one. This is basically the same test with an active web here to see what's happening. I use browsing in Docker and I enable BNC and I'm going to do something else. I'm going to enable recording. So I invoke these two methods in my web driver manager instance, which I also uh, I use later to create my web driver object. Okay. And if I if I run this, I'm going to see here an URL to connect through no MVNC. Let me show you this in action. I think it's better. And also I'm going to record the session, by the way. I'm going to do both. This is a starting. Okay, I am pulling. And here is the URL. This URL, if I copy and paste this URL to my local browser, this is my remote session, okay? I don't know, I can draw in here. This is an example of my book. And I'm interacting with the browser while this is being recorded, okay? Because, well, basically, of course, this could be an automated test. I am doing this manually for you to check that, well, this is being recorded. There is a, in here a manual wait of one minute just to interact with that. Of course, this is supposed to be an automated test and everything would happen automatically. And at some point, they will, they will, will end. And this is going to be in this. OK, I think it's that. Let me show when this happened. Okay, stopping. You need to, uh, to wait until the test stop because the, the containers are always disposed. And I have here my recording. Okay. This is what I did. Okay, this is what I did. Uh, well, at the beginning I was I was talking, but at some point I start interacting with. So 
closer. This is the, the picture I did, and this is what I did. Okay. So basically, changing two methods. Okay, you only well three three methods from Chrome Driver Manager, browser in Docker, enable PNC to go inside the the, 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 the container. And also recording. The recording is very useful for your continuous integration server because, well, everything happens in the server, but you don't know what happened. If you enable a recording, you can get the file and let check later what happened. And that happens only in your site changing a method. Okay, so that's in my opinion is well great. So, but this doesn't stand, uh, stop here because. Another very important feature is the version, okay? Because so far, if you don't see anything about the version, whether or not use the latest version, in this case for Chrome, 103. But what if I want to use another version? So it's a version, I don't know, 100. It's not the latest, okay? I'm going to make this smaller. And I'm going to enable where, where yeah. That's it. I'm going to delete this recording, I'm confusing with the other, and I'm going to run this. I'm going to use Chrome version 100, not the latest, but a given version 100. Okay, I have my URL, it's in here. I'm going to, well, I'm going to check in here. Help. This is one, Chrome 100, okay? And of course, I can continue interactive with my browser, and at some point I'm going to get the recording, okay? So even better than that, you can use wait, wait cards, okay? You can use, for example, latest minus one. It calculates the latest version at that point, and minus one means the previous version, and that nowadays would be 102. But even better, in my opinion, you have two wait cards, which is beta and dead. Much more funny. You can use the beta version of Chrome and Firefox only, okay? It is only supported in Chrome and Firefox because these uh, Docker containers are, are maintained by Trilio and they maintain only Chrome and Firefox. So let's see this, Chrome beta. I run this. I am recording, by the way. I, I had now two recording. And I'm going to show you that this is actually Chrome beta. It's not other version, but It's supposed to be 104. Okay. Well, that's it. Even funnier with the development version 105. Okay, so changing only a method, you can change the version you, you want, not even for Chrome, by the way, but also for Firefox. Firefox driver and other. Um, other um, Docker containers. By the way, I didn't mention, but uh, this is supported by for Chrome, uh, Firefox, Edge, Opera. This one, it's the logo of WebKit, which is the engine of Safari. Safari is a commercial product. You, don't, you cannot run it in Docker, but you can run um, a WebKit, which is the engine, which is supposed to be identical from a point, functional point of view. So you can, you can use Safari uh, driver to run WebKit. Okay. And also, uh, Chrome Mobile, Chrome Mobile in Android. Okay. That, that one is tricky because you need uh, um, hardware uh, um, virtualization support, but eventually you, you can manage to do that. So this is the Docker browser feature, very fast. I recommend you if this is, this is interesting for you, you check the documentation because I'm going to be going a bit fast. And the last feature of Web Driver Manager I want to mention here is monitoring, okay? And that's the latest, uh, Features I have implemented uh, this year. This is with the Remire 5.2. Uh, this version provides seamless integration with another of my open source projects, which is Browser Watcher. Okay, Browser Watcher is a browser extension which allows to implement different features for testing. Okay, I, I, in my experience, I detected some problems that cannot be solved using Selenium Web Driver only, and you need something else. And I, well, I created this extension. As a, well, as a toolbox for different features for monitoring, okay? This is a separate um, uh, project. You have the documentation on the source here. It's a, it's a web extension, but the thing is that WebDriver Manager 5.2, uh, 
install this install this this extension in your browser automatically for you and provides extra features. For example, for monitoring the the browser console. Okay, and let me show you this test in action. This is a test in which we invoke the method watch. When I invoke the method watch, what what your does is install this browser extension in your browser automatically for you. And thanks to that, I am able to get the logs using a single line. This so far was not possible in, in Firefox. If you have uh, experience with this, this was possible in Chrome, but not with Firefox until the ByteG uh, has emerged. This is a solution based on JavaScript that works nicely. And well, I can show you this example if you want. This, web page is a test web page I created for my book in which I intentionally I create five uh, traits. So basically invoking watch and at some point invoking get logs, I am going to be able to get the logs of a five or broke something in a single test. If I run this, here I have the logs, okay? Recover with browser, browser, and easily from my Java test, okay? So, well, of course, you can change your browser here. Yes, that wasn't the intention because the feature was not available. And well, with this, now it's possible. Maybe you can you want to, to check visually your logs, maybe not, but well, I have here another example. Let me show you this. It's a feature just in case you want to observe your, your, your logs directly using the watch on display. It's exactly the same. Uh, whether a manager collects the logs through browser watcher, but at the same time, it creates some uh, pop ups in the page to see the logs in the, in the user interface. So if, we, I run, if I run this, it's the same page, but with a uh, wait, I see these logs for a bit. Okay. It is useful. Well, it can be useful if you want to check uh, manually check your, your test. And also because browser watcher also allows to record. I have shown you how to record through Docker, but if you don't have Docker in your in your computer for some reason, you can even can create uh, uh, record. What is it? Yes, in here. They record each test. This is another example I want to show you with the code. Okay. Again, you need to invoke watch in order to use browser watcher. And at some point to, this, to you say start recording and stop recording, okay? So internally, browser watcher use a uh, tab, uh, tab capture API, which is JavaScript to uh, record the viewport of your browser. And this is going to be downloaded in here in my download those file uh, folder, so. So if I run this, this is basically a test it takes like five seconds in vain executed in a, a slow calculator. Ah, what's happened? Ah, it's the viewport. I mean, yeah, yeah. I know this problem. It's because I changed. That was. It's the problem of. I think with this, hopefully, this will be. Salt. Oh. Yeah. This is recording. This is being recorded. Okay. Because I changed the resolution of my screen. And I have my recording in here. It's only the viewport. Okay. But it's a recording of that test. Okay. Has been created by now. Okay, if you are interested, as I said, that you can take a look uh, to, the, to, the, um, to the documentation. And I want to conclude, well, very fast because I'm running out of time, I think, with some feature beyond Java. When I create a, a new version of uh, Web Manager, I also create the, the fat jar, that is the jar with all the dependencies. At that jar, that's five minutes, okay. With that jar, you can create different features. For example, resolving, feature uh, resolving uh, drivers locally with that. We have to question, right? 
I have this here. If I run this, this command, I use web driver manager locally, okay? I have the web driver manager to resolve web driver manager, okay? That's a feature you might be interested. For example, it's useful for Selenium Grid. Another feature I like is this one. You using direct, directly running Docker with the, the with the fact jar to explorative explorative testing. Okay, I mean, I'm going to run running um, a Chrome Docker, okay? and I can connect with that URL and interact with a browser I have just created. This is a working browser. Okay. okay. So this is about uh, the CLI. This is another use. And also another use you can use with the, with the manager is as a server, okay? Again, using the CLI, for example, like this, server, with the manager starts working as a server. It means it has a feature to resolve drivers using a REST like API. You can request to resolve driver to that browser, Yes, I will. I will share. Uh, I will share the my 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 slides on my slides share, share channel. I will post in Twitter. Okay, the link. As you can see, I have resolved this, and I have the the, the driver as um as attachment, and also it behaves as a Selenium server. I mean, I can use. For example, let me show you this, and this is going to be the last feature I show you. This test is no longer Java, it's JavaScript. And I'm going to ask for this URL, which is my Selenium server. I make with my server, sorry. So if I go to this, I can go, I can run this test against my web driver manager. No. Okay. And with driver manager behaves as a web driver uh, server using Docker to resolve uh, the browsers. Yeah, yeah I, I'm going to finish now. Well, there's web driver manager is not, is not perfect. It's mainly focused on Java and it has different technical details. For example, Chrome in Android, Docker in Docker browser in, in, in macOS IAM architecture. Monitory feature has different different uh, limitations, but uh, I keep maintaining web driver manager and it's, it's an open source project, so I'm happy to, to, to get contribution if you want. To conclude, web, so web driver manager is, I think it's a helpful tool. Uh, this is the evolution of the, the, the downloads. In the last year, it has raised a million of downloads, which is incredible, 100,000 uh, downloads in the last July to now 1.8 million per month. And the same for the IPs, okay? The IPs has more than double. Well, this is the, uh, my last slide. Now, the thanks that I have joined SourceLab as an open source contributor. Um, I am working closely with the Selenium uh, project and um, I am I'm going working in the proposal of something similar to web driver manager, but official to Selenium. Uh, my proposal is to call it Selenium manager. And it's also called the concept of batteries included. And my vision is that in the long term, uh, Selenium will do this job automatically for you. This driver management will be transparent using a tool, which maybe it's called Selenium manager. Okay, so we are continuing on that. And hopefully this would be a reality in the short term. So yeah, that's it. Sorry for the, the, uh, taking the time for questions. Um, I'd be happy to answer if you want. Yes, Boni. Thank you so much for the very insightful session. And we have two questions in our QA panel. Like, uh, the one is, can we set the browser log path for browser running in Docker? Uh, uh, yes, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I test, I have a test, I think actually about that and yes i that's that's a feature the only requirement is that uh, you have a, a, a user interface okay yes but if you have a user interface in docker it's also possible okay so 
The next question is, is there any plan to release WebDriver Manager for C Sharp? Uh, not for C Sharp, unfortunately. In fact, there is there is a port of WebDriver Manager called WebDriverManager.net. Okay, you can look for it. Um, but I don't plan to port to C Sharp. But as, as I said at the at the end, I plan to do something even better, which is do the Selenium Manager is going to be a binary, okay, which is going to be used by the whole language bindings. So hopefully in the future, the the manager will be Selenium manager is the, will be the official manager and will be available not for Java, but JavaScript, uh, C Sharp, Python, and the whole official language pipeline uh, by Selenium. So thanks team for joining with us. Thank you so much, Boni, for this session. Thanks a lot.